You are watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. With us, we have hormone expert, Dr. Pamela Smith. Dr. Smith, welcome to the program. Thank you. Now, uh, you know, I called you a hormone expert. Uh, this seems to be what you lecture on nationally. Is that right? It is. I've written a book on hormone replacement called HRT, The Answers. That's a bestseller. It is. Now, what's that book about? It's about female hormone replacement, looking at bioidentical, meaning the same chemical structure that the body makes. Now you lecture internationally uh, to physicians nationwide. Tell me about that. I do. I'm very fortunate that doctors really want to look at something new in medicine. Medicine in the past has been what we call disease-based, meaning that we really never looked at the cause of the problem. Now we have the science to look at why people have, for example, depression. And so part of what I do for a living is see patients. I also teach internationally uh, physicians and other kinds of healthcare practitioners. Now you speak at the Anti-Aging Society meeting. Doctors, and, I, and I've talked to doctors anticipating this interview, everybody knows you in the medical community. Um, and they, go, they look to you for, number one that I hear, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. A lot of doctors wanting to get involved. They hear the patient's uh, testimonials, they're feeling better. Uh, what are the other topics you talk about? Uh, I lecture also on nutrition. Okay. Uh, let me give you some examples. Bioidentical hormone replacement. When women take estrogen, it depletes the body of B vitamins, whether they're taking estrogen in birth control pills, whether they're taking estrogen in natural hormonal therapy or in synthetic, all of those deplete the body of B vitamins. So it's very important we replace those. In conventional medicine, we have never looked at nutritional deficiencies. Another example would be coenzyme Q10. Statin drugs like Mevacor, Zocor, Lipitor, that grouping of drugs are wonderful to lower cholesterol, but they also deplete the body of a very important nutrient called coenzyme Q10. That nutrient is part of the fueling source in your body. The way I like to explain it to a patient is that your body is a lot like a car. It's a Mercedes, and it does matter what kind of fuel you put in. If you put low octane and fuel in a Mercedes, what happens? No problem. You do. It breaks down, it dies early, and your body will do the same thing. We want to put good fuel in. Not only is that nutrition and what we eat, but also nutrients that may be deplete on medications that you're taking. Coenzyme Q10 is one of those very important nutrients that's about one-third of the fueling source in the body. So important to replace. Now you call it restorative medicine. Tell me about that. The new medicine. It is the new medicine. We want to look at an anti-aging approach which starts even before the child is born. We now know through a lot of research that it's very important as to the nutrients the mother takes, how much stress she has, what she eats while the child is still in utero. So before the child is even born, a lot of the nutrition will determine the IQ of the child. Of questions we get online about hormones and you know, now that I've interviewed a lot of doctors, there's a lot of different opinions about hormones. Some mainstream medical doctors will say that it, it does more harm than good. Tell me about that. Well, that's not what the science is showing. Okay. We want people to stay healthy because most of us will literally live to be 100 years of age. Longevity is less important as staying healthy. If you like golfing and you want to golf, you want to golf when you're 95 years of age. I personally like needlepoint and quilting. Okay. I still want to be able to do that. It's vision, memory, and mobility. In order to maintain those functions, it does require being hormonally and nutritionally sound. So bioidentical hormone replacement therapy is safe? It is safe. There is now more studies on bioidentical hormones than there have ever been on birth control pills. But just like any other hormone, it's very important that you measure, you use the right hormones, and you apply it appropriately meaning do you take the hormone by mouth, do you put it on the skin? The modality that you give the medication is just as important as is the balance of all the other hormones. Okay, before we get into the topic, let's talk about your background, your training. I know you lecture for the Anti-Aging Society. Uh, physicians from all over the country go to see you. Going to Australia next week, what's that about? Uh, next week I'll be teaching the Fellowship in Anti-Aging and Functional Medicine in Australia. I do le uh, lecture worldwide. Uh, last year I spoke on four continents. But I speak for a lot of different groups because my goal is a healthy patient. And okay. I think that's every doctor's goal. Now, hormone replacement therapy, big topic. What do women want to know? What do they ask you? Women want to know about symptoms. I think that's certainly the most common thing. Uh, a lot of women don't realize how their body works. Okay. 
Uh, estrogen in the body literally has 400 functions. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's taste, touch, smell, hearing, skin tone. Estrogen lowers cholesterol, blood sugar, blood pressure, maintains memory, maintains bone structure. It even helps prevent macular degeneration. It helps prevent cataracts. It does a lot more than people think it does. Is that the number one hormone that women want to know about, estrogen? Well, I think they want to know, is it safe? Okay, well, is it? And the question is, what kind of estrogen you're giving? Okay. A woman's body makes three estrogens, E1 estrone, E2 estradiol, and E3 estriol. The E1 estrogen we make more of as we age, we make more of if we're heavy, but that's the one we don't want to replace because scientists believe it's the one that's linked to breast cancer. The E2 estrogen is the 400 functions. E3 estrogen helps prevent breast cancer. We are now using E3 estrogen experimentally with and without tamoxifen, that's experimental, to treat breast cancer. We've been using it not experimentally to treat MS for a number of years. It's also important how estrogen is broken down in the body. Estrogen makes three other ones. And to keep it simple, it makes two, four, and 16 hydroxyestrogen. The two is the good one. That one you want most of because it decreases breast cancer risk. The 16 hydroxy, a woman needs a little bit of because it maintains bone, but if you have a lot, it increases breast cancer risk. The 4 hydroxy definitely increases breast cancer risk if a woman has a lot of. In fact, the science in 2006 and 7 is a lot on that 4 hydroxy estrogen. These can be measured by doing a urine test, they can be measured by blood. But it's important to see how the body's breaking down estrogen. If it's breaking it down into a fashion that's less desirous, that's totally fixable. No one in our practice has an estrogen that is not more 2-hydroxy than the other types. Now, since today's topic is bioidentical hormones, how is it different than, uh, say, Primarin or synthetic hormone replacement therapy or what they would get from their gynecologist, typically? Now, bioidentical hormones means the same chemical structure that Guy gave you to begin with. It's bioidentical. It's also called natural. Those words mean the same thing. Premarin, for example, is one half E1 and one half E2, but that's really not how the body works. A premarin's made from horse urine, so it's more biologically identical to a horse than it is to a human being. Okay, so these are bioidentical. Your body uh, recognizes them as real hormones. They do, and that's a really important question. When your body recognizes it as the actual hormone, then it stays on the receptor sites the, the length of time that it's supposed to. Synthetic hormones stay on the receptor sites longer. They also don't balance. For example, progesterone. The synthetic is called progestin. Unfortunately, the news usually uses the word progesterone for the synthetic. It's a lot like apples and oranges. They're okay. both fruit, but they're not the same. If you wanted an orange and I gave you an apple, that would be an issue. Okay. So progesterone is the natural bioidentical form. That one balances estrogen. It leaves the receptor sites quickly. It helps with anxiety, irritability, insomnia, mood swings, depression, heart racing, bladder problems, and gut disturbances. So as people get older, mm -hmm. hormones decline. Yes. And you're just... We're balancing. Okay. The synthetic progestin doesn't do that. It stays on the receptor sites longer. It does not balance with estrogen. It can actually cause the anxiety, irritability, insomnia, mood swings, and depression. And the newer studies are showing that progestins increase the risk of heart disease and breast cancer. What do women say that are getting hormone replacement therapy? What do they say? Women that are balanced love it. I mean, myself, I'm in my mid-50s. I feel much better now than I did when I was 40, because when I was 40, I was not hormonally sound. I was not balanced. Okay. Do you think women don't know how good they could feel? Oh, I'm convinced of that really? fact. Really? People think it's, the, quote, the aging process. It's not. Right now we have a science to keep people functioning very well until their mid-90s. So there's no reason that you have to feel bad. Your memory has to decline. Your memory can be just as rapid fire as you age. The number of brain cells that you have does not decline with age. What declines are your neurotransmitters, especially acetylcholine. In our practice, we went into Ann Arbor, Michigan, and we worked with a law firm and all of the lawyers above the age of 50. We increased all of their IQs 
by making them hormonally and nutritionally sound at least seven points after the age of 50. So you give them hormones back? You do. That they lose? You give them exactly what they're losing, but we're not trying to replace to fertility. We're trying to replace to function. So you believe that the second half of life, 50 plus, let's say, can truly be the best half. Oh, definitely. You have, especially as a woman, a it lot of like less worries. It sounds like an exaggeration, worries, though. I but know. it's not. Women before the age of 50 spend their whole life taking care of other people. Okay. Women worry about getting pregnant. They have all these stressors. After menopause, they don't have to worry about being pregnant anymore. They can still be sexually interested. It truly, women are less busy because frequently their children are outside the house now. It's the best time in a woman's life. What are the frequently asked questions women have for you about hormones? I think safety is the first question. Okay. Uh, the next is, do I need hormones? So we want to measure to see if they need them.